detail about that. What does it give? You tell me, I don't know. It's your scripture. If he spoke to him face to face, he should have seen whether it was the Father or the Son or the Holy Spirit together or individually. Does he differentiate? It doesn't say the does he give you any indication that he's actually speaking to one of the persons out of the three? Okay, but the point I'm making is... Now, the point I'm making is the lack of understanding of Hebrew language may be the issue here. So you say, okay. so because it's when it's someone says, I have spoken to him face to face, does it really mean okay. as you're describing? Okay, but I have evidence that, that, you know, you're basically saying, okay, Moses says he's going to go into Israel, and uh, he says, who should I say sent me? Yeah. He says, I am. Sent no, he didn't speak English. What did he say in Hebrew? I don't know. I don't really know. It's important because I, am. because I am, when it's translated, it becomes a sentence. Okay. Like, and I then, am. And then Jesus in the New Testament says, Okay, let me, says, let me, let me no, no. ask him, who do you think you, my, you, know, my, who my, do you say you are? My friend, the reason why I'm, I'm going to go to the original, because oh, when you say, you when say you say I am in English, you're already making into a meaningful sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, get, so, I just want to make a point. He says, they ask him, he says, who do you, uh, who do you say you are? You know? And he says to the Pharisees, mm. uh, before Abraham was born, I am. I am what? He was referring to the same thing uh, that Moses I am what? Was. That's his title, I am. No, no, no. You know? If I told you, before Abraham was, I am, you have all the right to ask me, I am what? No, the, fa the, the Pharisees basically said he's, he's claiming to be God. No, no, look, forget Pharisees. I'm asking you. When he says I am, yeah. is I am the title of God, the name of God? Uh, it is one of the titles of It is the name of God name that has been sold in the New Testament evangelists, right? So let's substitute the same name back to his original, Yahweh. So now imagine Jesus Christ says to them, before Abraham was Yahweh. What claim is he making by saying that? I'm going to use the same words, putting the original back. Jesus says, tells them, he informs them, before Abraham was Yahweh. It's like, it's like saying, if it said that, then... No, no, no it's not. Back. That's what it says. The name I am is Egoemi in Greek. So Egoemi, supposedly translated from the Hebrew, Yahweh. So let's go back to the original Yahweh. So Jesus says, before Abraham was Yahweh. What claim is he making? Which, which uh, version of the Bible are you referring to? It's the original version. Putting back the Hebrew back Hebrew. there. It from, yes, Hebrew. I am is supposed to be the Hebrew Yahweh. Sure yeah, Yahweh, Yahye, Yesher, Yahye, Yesher, Yahye. I am who I am. That's the Tetragrammaton right in Hebrew so if Jesus said that now you realize why I do not rely on translations because I am in English is a sentence as a statement saying I am I was I will be something like that okay. but that is not the translated meaning from Yahweh okay, but so no Jesus to claim that he's I am he should have used two I am's he should have said before Abraham was I am I am then he's making a claim he's saying I am that I am but he didn't use twice it says, Ego Amy. It's simply, I am. So, not only Christians are at fault in misunderstanding the text, because he's not using the title, I am referring to God. This I am is simply, I was there, or I am existing, and so on. So, the Christian scholarship understands that to refer to Christ's pre existence, perhaps, but not of claiming divinity as a divine title, like the Christ Christian lay people like yourself are claiming. So, so now let's go back. Let's go back to Moses before you go into and you know some immerse ourselves into all this semantics. Did Moses say God is Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in any way, shape, or form? Uh, no, he's saying that uh, Moses didn't. Did he preach the Trinity? No, he didn't. You know? So what did he preach? Did he preach about God is one? Did he say, "Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is"? One God. Did he say three in one God? Do you understand the difference between one and three in one? Okay. Do you understand the difference between one and three in one? Or are they the same? I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a conflict between saying that God is one. Can I, can I, can I ask you? I, 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 I want to ask you this question. Is, is, 
It's one, it's one, three, three in one, two in one, five in one. Are you listening? Are you listening? I, I, ignore the background noise. We're having a discussion. My friend, ignore the background noise. We're having a discussion. So, can I, can I rephrase my question to you? God is one. He's the Father. He has this, uh, Jesus as the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's not one. That's not one. When they said, let us create, That's not one. make man. That's not one. That's one Godhead. Okay. Yeah. Imagine yeah. me and you. No, no, hang on, hang on. This is the crux of the matter. Yeah. Establishing the Christian concept of Trinity no, no, no. is incoherent, incoherent, illogical, irrational. But the Islamic concept, Islamic concept of pure monotheism is not only coherent, not only logical, not only rational, it's sensible and believable. So when when you talk about one and three in one, one and two in one, so let, let's understand from the very basics now. Is two in one the same as three in one? Why not? I know you tell me. I want to know why not? Why is two in one not the same as three in one? Because once we understand the differences between that, we will understand the difference between one and two in one and one and three in one. Because they're not the same, clearly. Either you believe in one God or you believe in other than one God. Three in one, five in two, they're not equal to one God. They're not equal to one. So what is the difference between two in one and three in one? The point I'm trying to make is I don't think... Before you go to any points, let's address this point. I'm talking about this point. Oh, go ahead. That, that God is one, right? God is one. Uh, God is in the form of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it's a Godhead. It's like one family. You say there's one family state. One family there. of how many gods? One ruling family. Sure, sure. They are the ruling one family. ruling family of how many gods? But that's, that's the, that, we're saying that is God. That's what no, we're one ruling family of how many gods? They are not equal. You know, like you're saying, oh, uh, okay. Jesus himself said he's not equal to the Father. You know what? So the Father is greater than You know God. what? Let's, let's clarify. Is the Father God? He's the Almighty God. Yes. Is he? Is, the is, is, is the Father God? Is the Father, the Father God? The Father is Almighty God. Is He God, right? Yes. How much of God is He? Full? Half? One third? Yeah, I'm not going to get into it. No, 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 it's important. If He's God... I have to really go. No, 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 my friend, before you go, it's important. Maybe this will be the one... It's, it's a difficult... Critical thing. thinking that I will think, save you from the hellfire. I think... So, I, let's, let's, let's talk about it. To, yeah. If somebody is God, how much of God is He? For humans to try to understand... Like, my friend, like the concept of God, if, the if, if some, no, think, and we have to think of it like there's only one entity, my, my friend, we can't think beyond that. If somebody's God, yeah. do you think this God that you say this father is God, is he less than one God, equal to one God, or more than one God? No, it's fully, it's, it's, it's 100% God. 100%. God, yes. If you're 100% God, are you yes. one God or less than one God? The, the, the ruling family, have, no, no, have forget the ruling family, we're talking okay. the father only, but they have different Fa functions, father only. If the Father is 100% God, how much of God is He? Why do you have to run? This could be the one that saves you from the eternal hellfire. My friend, listen, listen. Take this seriously. This could be the one that really opens up your heart and your mind to say that Trinity is not something that makes sense. This much doubt yeah? that you're wanting to leave, brother. Then, then you have to question it. But go back, go back. Yes, every Christian. You know, that. phone your friend and say, I am engaging in a serious con con discussion about one God, and this could be a life changing. My life, my death, my salvation, the hereafter depends on it. But you're asking, so you're asking questions. That I so I'm asking a simple really question. Like no, no, I'll you, say, you I'll can. You. Okay. Like, uh, can I ask the same you, question to this guy, you, you this man? Wait, wait, wait. If you're 100% God, how many God are you? One God. If you are 100% God, are you one God or less than one? One God. If you are 100% God, are you one God or less than one? Did they have any difficulty answering? God says you, I, I've you, given you three individuals yeah, you, answering straight away. Have you seen God? Wait, wait. Why did it have any difficulty? Because if you are 100% something, you are one of that something. You're not less than one. That's what 100% means. So if the Father is 100% God, He must be one God. not one half or one quarter or one third, he has to be one. Yes, one God. If you have the Father is one God, then who are the other? One God. And the Son is what? Other than the one God. You've already, you've already identified one. 
You've already identified one God is the Father. The Holy Spirit and the they're Holy other than this one God. Son. They're other than the one God. Extra, supernumerary than this one God. Because you've identified the one God is the Father, 100%. That means anything else besides him is extra, another God and another God. This is the whole point I was trying to make this whole afternoon. That, uh, we basically, we basically like believing the same thing, but there's a lot of confusion between the different... Who, who's us. confused? We are confused I'm, or you are confused? That's the problem because you think I'm confused. No, I'm no, I'm not I think thinking. I'm asking you. Okay, <laughs> where is my confusion? When I know because if you're 100% God, you must be one God. Is there a confusion for some, there? For some reason, that, uh, is there a confusion? Yeah, I think for some reason the, the, the Muslims can't understand that, that... We understand. No, you can't... Okay, let me tell you how you understand, understand it. That, that God could be plural. No, let me tell you... No, I understand that if Father is 100% God, that's Even one God. Even though it says then, Genesis, then, 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 said, my friend, us make man in our, our no, no. own image. Don't go, to, don't go to language yet. If the Son is 100% God, that's one God. How many gods would we have? Two gods. If the Holy Spirit is 100% God, that's another one God. There were three one gods. How are the three one gods together one God? Tell me. Father is 100% one God. The Son is 100% one God. The Holy Spirit is 100% one God. How are they one God and not three? No, no, don't. Leave the Bible for a second. Use your critical thinking. Critical thinking. Three 100% one gods makes Three gods or one god? Uh, just, just to let you know, just to let you know, Muslims, it's, it's not that Muslims don't understand it, we just reject it. Yeah, we reject it. It's a lie. Yeah? This is opening your heart and mind with critical thinking. So when you go home, reflect on it. Because this is exactly what prophets and messengers came to tell the people to worship one absolute, perfect, divine being, not a composite of three in one, five in twenty. Jesus. One and only. Isaiah the prophet, do you believe in him? He says, God tells him to say, I alone am God. Before me there was no God form. After me there will be no God form. I alone am God and there's none else. Do you think within the Trinity one of them can say that? I alone am God and there's no one else? I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say I believe in the Trinity, but it's, there's clearly a in the Bible, there's clearly, clearly a plural where it was saying plural of they, what? Were, they were creating it was plural a, of what? I don't know, entities they were creating. No, let us make man in God, our own image. No, in so it okay, wasn't, let me to, to help you man. to help you clarify the confusion in the Quran. God speaks in the we as well. Yes, in we in, in the, we in the, have revealed, brother, sorry. we have revealed the Quran and we will protect it. Do any Muslims on planet Earth think God is more than one? Never. Do you know why? Because this is a language in which a plural is used often to denote majesty, might, authority and power. So when God says, for example, worship us, never you'll find that in the Quran. God says, worship, one second, worship me, worship me, never worship us because when it comes to my friend, I'm just explaining to you the linguistic nuances. When God wants to describe closeness and proximity, God says, me, worship me. But when he wants to demonstrate his authority, his might, his power, okay. he says, us and we. Okay, not, we have done this, we have done that. But no Genesis. one believes it, it means more than one God. I'm not just talking about Genesis where it says, let us make man in our own image. Uh, in the New Semitic Testament, languages, in Arabic and Hebrew, the Semitic languages, same grammar. Okay, Absolutely, in, yeah. in John 1 verse 1. Hold on, even, says, e even if you ignore Semitic languages, does doesn't the Queen, when she's not happy with something, say, we are not amused? Okay, the okay. we, the plural, so, is a plural of respect and majesty. So Did John, Jesus identify himself as part of the Trinity? Uh, who's saying in, in, he says, in the beginning was the Word, he no, the Jesus Word. No, Jesus never said that. Now, did Jesus, the was the word, have you ever, the have, was, you, have you ever written, have you ever seen a red letter Bible? Do you know what a red letter yes, Bible is? Yes, yes. A red letter Bible are 
Bibles are a Bible in which the words of Christ is in red. So you can immediately identify when Christ is speaking. So you're saying that verse is not valid? No, I am saying, has Jesus, no, this is the author of this book telling you about his perception about God. Yeah. Did he say God is three in one there? No. He's talking about two gods there. I'll demonstrate to you what he, why he took us two gods. In the beginning was the word. Yeah. And the word was with God and the word was God. So the word, which is God, was with God. How many gods is John talking about? Two, Two gods. Technically, you could say one. In the beginning was the word, and which was the, which was God, was with who? Was God. So there is two gods. So John is a binitarian here. Do you, I, do you believe in John? So you believe in two gods? Two gods there That's what one John is God saying. Is, one God here. That's what John is saying. Paul, on the other hand, says, the God of our Lord Christ. In most of the letters he sends to the churches, he says the God, the Father and God of our Lord Christ. He doesn't identify Christ as God. He says God and Lord. Jesus has a God. So here Paul is saying something different. John is saying something. Paul is saying something different. That is why we want to know what does Jesus say himself? Not what Paul says, not what John says. What does Jesus say to the people in relation to who he is? Do, does he say, worship me, I am God on earth? Or does he say, O our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy will be done, thy kingdom come, thine is the glory forever and forever. I'm just paraphrasing the Lord's Prayer. Who is identifying who the God is? Who is he praying to? Who is identifying God? Whose is the will and glory and the kingdom? Whose? Not his. God. So is he identifying himself as God and a divine being? When he says, I am going to my father and your father, and to my God and your God, who is he going to? His God. Is he identifying that he's God? In his black and white terms, sorry, in red letters, he is saying, I have a God that I'm going to. So he says, before Abraham was, I am. That doesn't mean. I am what? Yeah. Oh, Brother, one moment. Before Abraham was, I am what? We've dealt with it already. If he's dealt with it already, why are you asking the question? Yeah, I am what? Basically, the title is saying to Moses, Okay. So now, let me, let, no, no, let me tell you again. I am is the name of God, Yahweh. So before Abraham was Yahweh, what is Christ claiming? This is his words. Before Abraham was Yahweh. What is he claiming? He's claiming nothing. He's only claiming that before Abraham was, it was Yahweh. Not anything about himself. Christians, church, preachers, your pastors, they will not tell you that. They will not teach you that because you will come away from Christianity once you realize that. When he said that, they wanted to kill him. Look, they can okay. Do you do you consider do you consider the accusations of people to be true? Did they not accuse him of a madman, a crazy person, demon possessed? Do you believe in them? The same Jewish people accused Christ of demon possessed, mad, crazy man. Do you believe that this is true? Do you accept the accusation to be true? That Jesus is indeed demon possessed, is indeed a mad person. You have to if you're going to be consistent. If you're not consistent, you say that is only their accusation. No, my friend, my friend, when, brother, can I, can I just clarify one, one second? When, when, no, when, when they accused Jesus Christ of demon possessed, do you accept the accusation to be true? So, so now you realize one thing, just because they accuse Jesus of something, it doesn't mean the accusation is true. Do you accept that now? So just because they accuse him of blasphemy, it doesn't mean he blasphemed. Main, it's an accusation. I'm making is God is one and you know the Father. Not three in one. It's not, Why don't you say God is not three in one? They're not equal. Because Jesus even said himself that, that my father is greater than I. Father is greater than I. So, so, it, that's right. so why do Christians worship so Christ? Jesus is the Son of God. What does it even mean? And when he's the only begotten Son. Well, no, what does it Son of God mean? I didn't take it as you might, but he says when I come No, no, back, what I'll do you understand? The right, there can only be one son of God. What does it even mean? It means he's, he, he's in a position of authority. Is he created or uncreated? That I, that I don't know. Okay, there's only two options. Either he's... Let's yeah, go by both. Let's analyze both. If he's created, then he's a 
creation of God. He cannot be God. If he's uncreated, then he's another God because he's uncreated. If someone is uncreated like the Father, it means for his own existence, he is not dependent on anyone else. He is uncreated. If Jesus is uncreated, Jesus doesn't need the Father. He's independent of the Father. If he's uncreated, then he must be inherently possessor of all attributes of independence and self-sufficiency. That will make him God. That will make him one God, not half a God. So now you will have two gods. Either you have two gods or you have one God. Which one? The created one. If he's created, then it's not God. Thank you. Who said that? Which one? You did. Which one? Either you believe in one God, in that case Jesus cannot be God, or you believe in two gods. You, your heart tells you, your heart tells you there is only one God. So you have to reject Jesus being God. That's what your heart tells you. That's what your mind tells you. Son of God is what? Creation? Is he creation? Uncreated. Then he's a creation. Then he's nothing to do with God divinity. Anyone who's a creation of God is a creation who's dependent. John 1 verse 1 says all things were created through him. No, no. If God gives you the power to create another world, would that make you God? It, if God gave you the same power he gave to Christ, would that make you God? It wouldn't. It would never make you God. No, but divine. Would it make you divine? No. It would not make you God. Divine means what? Hang on. Now you're going to another argument. If somebody worships you, would that make you God? It wouldn't. Hang on. If you don't prevent anyone worshipping you, would that make you God? Brother, brother, excuse me, please, please, please. Brother, please. If you don't prevent someone from worshipping you, would that make you God? Not irrelevant. It's the same counter argument to your claim. Jesus is God because someone worshipped him and Jesus did not object. If someone worships you and you do not object, would that make you God? Who said he was divine? If you perform miracles, would that make you God? No, it wouldn't. Every single argument you bring, I'm going to apply that to you. Tell me something Jesus did. No. I'm saying, if you did miracles, no, no, God, God, God. Would that make Jesus God? God is a good word. God, uh, what I mean by God is independent, self sufficient, eternal, everlasting being. Who is unlike anything? No, I'm saying a God is someone who is eternal with no beginning, everlasting with no end, and totally, absolutely independent, self-sufficient. Right, no, that's God. I'm describing God. If you say that's God, now is Jesus self-sufficient? The answer is no. So he cannot be God, by definition. By definition, he cannot be God. It's clear he's, he's not the Father. No, he's not God. It's, it's clear that he was part of the, Look, the creation this, process. This fence, yeah. how can you call this fence God? It needs to have properties of if, God. If you, what property would that fence need to can, make it God or to be even labeled as God? If you can create something, is it making you God? Hmm? You can create something, is that making you God? If you create something, if that can, something is not God. If you can bring life to something, does that make you God? No, it doesn't. Only God can do it. No, no, it, brother, subhanallah. Why, 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 are you trying to, why are you trying to confuse the conversation? You, you have. I'm making a point that if God gave you the life and he gave you the power to give life, would that make you God? But you just said only God gives life. But I'm just telling you now, if God gave you the ability to give life, would that make you like God? Carry on with your argument. No, we need to really focus on exactly the topic we're discussing. You thought that he's going to help you, my brother's not going to help you. Because he's now understood that actually, no, if God gave my brother here the ability to give life, like in the Quran, Allah says about Jesus Christ, be me that he gave life to the dead, with the permission of God, because God gave him the ability, it doesn't make him God. It, if God gave you and you the ability to give life, it doesn't make you God. If God gave the ability to the Dajjal, the Antichrist, to give life, would that make the Dajjal God? It would not make him God. God has to be someone who is eternal, everlasting, no beginning, no end, almighty, independent, absolute. Jesus was 
None of these. Didn't, uh, didn't Jesus have the title of everlasting Prince of Peace in the Old Testament? Did he have a beginning? Uh, that, that, that's a question I don't know. You know? The Bible says? What does the Bible say? Okay. Two options. Either he has a beginning or he doesn't have a beginning. If he has a beginning, he's not God. If he has no beginning, he is another God. Two gods. You cannot escape the problem of multiple gods and deities. In the beginning was the word. It didn't say, you know. In the beginning of what? Beginning of the earth. Suppose he was in the beginning of everything. Then you have two gods. You're having two gods. Now tell me, how do you escape worshipping this concept of two gods? You have to have two gods or three gods or many gods. Now, but I will say, even if the Bible establishes three gods, it's incoherent and unbelievable. I'll tell you why. Because a God who's independent and almighty and sovereign, there can only be one of them. If there was more than one of such gods, the whole universe would be at ruin. Imagine one of the gods, imagine the sun says, I have a plan and I'm going to keep it secret. Is he able to keep it secret from the Father? This is mind-blowing exercise. This is a mind-blowing exercise of reason and critical thinking. If the Son wants to have something, a plan secret, not to let the Father know, because he's God, he should be able to. If he's not able to, then he's not God, he's not Almighty. But if he's able to keep it secret, then the Father is not God because he is not unknowledgeable. He couldn't find out the plan. That will make the Father not God. Either way, you can only have one God. Look, you see this twig, a piece of branch? Imagine an almighty God who wants to lift it from the floor up to this here, about one meter. Being almighty or powerful means you are able to. There's nothing that can prevent you from doing that, right? Absolutely possible. Imagine you have another almighty God who says, no, I want to lift the same thing up, up to here. He is also all powerful almighty and nothing can prevent him from picking up to there. Where is this twig going to go? When you have two almighty gods. There's not two almighty gods. In the Old Testament it describes Jesus as a mighty God. Then he's not God. God has to be almighty or he's not God. A semi-god or a demi-god is not God. It's less than God. If you are not all powerful and almighty, then you're not God. What happened? Why is there limitations? in your power why is there restriction in your power because you're deficient yeah you're weak and deficient makes you not god anyway take you um take your time to reflect on this my friend right why so just to summarize i apologize brother to interject the reason being when we are discussing a point we don't want to let them off the hook because that's what he's trying to do he's trying to find every opportunity to to go somewhere else and I'm telling you from experience, this is what happens. Every single conversation, they're trying to find escape routes. One of the escape routes is, I have to go. I have an appointment. It could be genuine. We don't know what his heart is. We grant, you know, we have this husband of dhan, okay, fine, maybe he has an appointment, he has to go. But that was half an hour ago, but still continued. Anyway, we do not know the reality of things. Maybe he has an appointment. But we see in most cases when they were quite happy in speaking to someone and suddenly when you bring about this topic, they have to go. So that's one escape route. And another escape route is when they can't deal with the arguments, they find someone else to have another straw man arguments to refute someone else and counter the argument which you even, even made. Somewhere else to deflect it. It's called the deflection tactics. And that's why when we are discussing together, we should try to avoid any kind of deflection happening in our discussions. Brother Raihan was listening. Why is he not helping him to interject and so on? Because he knows the moment he starts about something else, he's going to deflect it. That's what happens from experience. I apologize if I hurt your feelings. You haven't hurt my feelings. I apologize. But the reason I said, brother, you know, don't bring in, I just wanted to abruptly come to an end. So if I, as I, as I said, I, no, how, you know, bad feelings, anything, it wasn't intentional. I just simply wanted to bring it back to the same point. I have no bad feelings and I knew Thank what you. he was doing yeah. and I deflected him right back. Thank you very much. Yeah. So just to summarize, if you are, Barakallah Fikum, may Allah, may Allah reward you and bless you for all that you're doing 
to bring people to Islam, to convey the message of Islam. Um, just to conclude then, we started talking about the concept of one God and the concept of three in one God. And we gave examples of how one is not the same as three in one or cannot be three in one. What we wanted to establish, of course, the, you know, there was a lot of, you know, hesitancy and a lot of, you know, uncomfortable feeling to talk about the difference between one and three and one. Because someone who is sincere knows the difference. Two in one is not the same as three in one. Likewise, one is not the same as two in one. One is not the same as three in one. So our Christian friends, if you are listening and watching this, and you're thinking, you know, why are Muslims talking about all of this? Ask yourself, ask yourself. Every prophet and messenger, they came to clarify who God is. That God was one. They never came to tell you that God was two in one, or three in one, or five in 20 million, whatever. They never did this. They always said one, one, one. And when they said one, the people understood it one. But it's only later people started now associating partners with one God and knowing that one God makes sense. So even though there are three gods working together, they don't want to say we believe in three gods because you will label them as tritheists. And they know this is a label they don't want to have. And that's why I say, no, we believe in a three in one God. Which of course, as you know, it's not one. It's still three gods working together as one. So if you are a Christian and you are listening to all of this and watching this, open up a copy of the Quran. Read chapter 112. And ask yourself, every single verse or ayah within this chapter, does it make sense? Here and here. If it does, then you know that is the concept that God is asking us to believe in, which your heart and your mind accepts. And that is the concept the Quran brings. So what's stopping you from accepting the Quran? What's stopping you from becoming a Muslim? Because you will be a submitter, one who surrenders only to one and only true God. Because God is one and only. أقول قولي هذا استغفر ولكم وأخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته